He has nafs, which is his soul, and he has jism, which is his body. These three things are the structure of the created universe. It's a universe of spirit, it's a universe of soul, it's a universe of nafs, and it's a universe of jism. These three things exist in us. And because they exist in us, and in no other thing, the potential exists in man to rise up and realize in himself the locus of manifestation of all the divine names, of all the names of Allah. So the movement, movement up the mac macrocosm is necessary, as I said, and movement within the microcosm, within man, is also necessary. We move from the certainty of physical death to the potential knowledge of permanent existence within our, within our time span. We move from ignorance, ignorance of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we move from weakness, weakness in understanding, weakness in recognition to power. To power that comes from knowledge and awareness and certainty and yaqeen. And this process, this movement that Muhammad talks about is what the stations of all the great masters of the ways of all the great tariqahs. Uh, so the various halls, the various maqams, the various landings, manazil and so on. These are all part and parcel of the necessary movement of enlightened beings from one state to another as part and parcel of the structure of the universe manifested by the overarching name of the merciful. The rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes everything return back. But the rahmah specifically to man is the ability of, of us to understand this journey while we are within this time, very short time, that is allotted us to be conscious of it. So, all of these things, the macrocosm, macrocosm, the uh, finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are all essential concepts that has divine names, these are essential concepts of the matter. There's another set of concepts relating to the way that the existent order, the cosmic order, reacts. How, what is the dynamics, as it were, of the cosmos? I don't mean the celestial mechanics or the movement of the stars or the relationship between planets and natural laws and so on. These are at a different level when we talk about that, inshallah, later. It is that the cosmic order, not only does it require hierarchy, not only does it require motion, that is in a constant state. And at every instant, it is being recreated, it's being reordered, it's being re-manifested by last night. This links uh, uh, parenthetically in Arabic to some of the Ash'ari schools, who uh, there's a good uh, debate as to whether the actions of Allah SWT are constant in terms of creation, or the creation happened at one given point in time, <coughs> and then followed a certain natural sequence. So the Arabic affirms that the order of Allah's creation demands that creation is in constant flux, that it's in constant, constant creation, growth and destruction. At every infinite, infinitesimally small instant, <coughs> we are in that. If I raise my hand now, it is because of the divine name, power, the powerful, Al-Qadr, that has allowed me to do that. And this action of mine that seems to be spontaneous, that seems to be part and parcel of my own willpower, is really only a reflection of a divine attribute acting at that particular moment in time. So the decision technically mine at this level is in reality under the, the dome of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, under the dome of the divine name. So the, the dynamics of creation are those that require constant creation, birth, rebirth, creation and destruction at the same time. And this comes from the uh, ayah in the Quran Kareem, uh, ayah 29, Allah describes himself as being every instance he is and this self-disclosure this man constant manifestation of Allah Taala, is part of the natural order of creation another feature of that natural order is that creation never is never the same 
self-disclosure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never repeats itself. So there is nothing that is exactly similar to something else. The action is always ever new, ever refreshing, ever spontaneous, ever purposeful. So the all actions, all movements, all uh, cause and effect ultimately must be related to the ultimate source, which is Musabbab al Asbah, the cause of all the causer of all causes. This is important of course when we when we try to understand uh, how people how great worries can overcome what appears to be things like natural disasters, massacres, uh, genocide, and so on. It is not that they condone it. It is not that they, that they accept it from the perspective of the shark or the scale of the world. It is that they see the mercy behind it all. They see the act behind it all, even though it might appear to us at one level to be erroneous, to be wrong, to be destructive, and we have to act against that. But nevertheless, the hand of Allah SWT is behind each and every single <coughs> movement, action, entity, observation, force, velocity, acceleration, you name it. Every natural law is subject to Allah's will of maintaining it. <coughs> the other thing that he, that he frequently did, uh, I discussed the return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the process of returning back as being part of the order of creation and the need for human beings to experience, to taste this process of returning prior to their physical death. The other thing that he that he uh, is very affirmative about is the, uh, the whole concept of the ethics of the soul. That, that is the the order of creation and the hierarchy of the divine names are not something that we should we should just accept. For example, generosity, being in a state of karam, or being in a state of uh, forgiving people. These are all reflective of the divine name. It's not that we should aspire to them. They are part of us, part of the the mechanism by which the the microcosm is organized, is organized along these divine names. And the ethics, that is akhlaq, of those in true uh, gnosis, in true tasawwuf, in true arfan, is to recognize that we have to aspire to a balance of these names. And one of the order of, of creation is in order to understand the divine names and therefore understand their, their, their significance in terms of our own actions. It's not that we should be generous because society expects us to be generous. Or we should be kind because we should be kind. Or it is that is what we are. Generosity, kindness, mercy, uh, a sense of sense of forgiveness, a sense of uh, uh, being in a state of repentance, a sense of, of giving, a sense of expansion. These are part and parcel of our being. It is not that we should learn these traits. We should only re-manifest them in us. And that is what the, the true ethics of those in Tasawwuf is. It's not that they are generous because they, have, they, they feel they are, they are expecting a reward or because it gives them a nice feeling. It is part and parcel of being in balance. And balance is, again, another equilibrium of Qur'an. It's a very important uh, concept that underlines nearly all of the great moods in our in our, in our own way of realizing the ethics and the attributes of Allah SWT, whether to be guided, to be in Hidayah, or whether to be in darkness, to be in Dalai. And it is really a question of choice on our part, whether we allow this, this element or that element to predominate. But the predominance of Hidayah or guidance will overcome that of Dalai if we are on the path trying to realize within us the hierarchy of the divine names. There's obviously a right way and a wrong way of taking on these names. It takes precedence over vengeance, although the name vengeful is also in, the, in one, of the, uh, one of the names of Allah SWT, al-Muntaqan. It is not that there is no such thing as al-Muntaqan. There is al-Muntaqan. 
But a Rotakan is preceded by the merciful. So the balance of the names within us and the realization within us is one of the features of being in true Moses and true understanding. I mentioned also frequently he, he, he mentions in his well, let me see things as they really are and seeing them in terms of their intention, but seeing them in terms of the entire order of the and the of the gnosis of loathing for Marifa becomes as we have twenty twenty vision, we have perfect vision, the twenty twenty inner vision, the twenty twenty inner basira is the heart of all those who are in true gnosis. So when they see something that's wrong, they correct it. But they see behind it the entire structure and mercy of the creator. If the injustice done, they will try to rectify it. They will have to rectify it. But then they see the reality behind it. And the reality behind it may indicate that they may not be able to justify it. They may not be able to rectify it. But it is there. And they have to act. And action takes precedence over just contemplation. Seeing things as they are allows the Arif according to the system of Arabi, and I think, inshallah, according to the way that we will follow, is to understand the hidden purposes, or to try to understand the hidden purposes behind what are uh, things that seem to be wrong or erroneous or incorrect. All this will lead, inshallah, to us approaching the Maqam, which <coughs> approaching, but not being in the maqam of the perfect man, the Nisan Kandil, who is none other than the Prophet in him. All the great divine attributes and reflected in his conduct, in his being, in his awareness, the Ismail Janak, the combined name, the combined name of all the attributes. He became the Khan of Janak. The Ismail Janak is the name of Allah. It is the name that combines all the divine names. So Allah is the name of all the divine happiness. al Khan of Jannah, that is the microcosm that gathers, is the perfect man. And that is the model that we will inshallah follow to the model of Prophet So prophecy, prophethood, the role of the Prophet, and the system of creation, the life of the Prophet, and Nur Muhammad, we come back later inshallah. Is Just at the beginning, he said knowledge of Allah.